Once you're launched into space, you cannot afford to be ill-equipped to face the cold, sterile, extraplanetary space. So, the life of an astronaut really depends on the integrity of their suit. What is their suit made of? Is it really safe? How much does it cost to manufacture? Join us as we discuss everything on the space suit of an astronaut. In space, astronauts face a wide range of temperatures, some as cold as minus 150 degrees Fahrenheit, while others as hot as 250 degrees in the sunlight. There are also small bits of space dust traveling at incredible speeds that could turn anyone dressed for a beach party into a sponge. Not to mention the radiation in space, astronomers need to be protected from the blinding lights too. Since there is no sheltered environment like our atmosphere in empty space, you can count on the fact that there is no oxygen in the void of space. All these factors make space travel a mission impossible without an astronaut having a well-stocked spacesuit. As an astronaut, you must go to space with your oxygen supply, visors for eye protection, something to wear that will keep the lightning-fast particles from punching a hole through your chest, and still a good material that keeps you from freezing to death or getting roasted alive. It's quite the task to get it all right, but if one is out of place, either you do not return the same or you do not return at all. A fully equipped spacesuit is really a one-person spacecraft. On the International Space Station and on the Space Shuttle, the formal name for the spacesuit is the Extravehicular Mobility Unit. Did you know that the astronaut can move around in the spacesuit? That is what the mobility in EMU means, composition of a spacesuit. So, what are the parts of a spacesuit? Spacesuits are basically pressurized garments that astronauts wear while in space. They are typically constructed from nylon, spandex, and other synthetic polymers and liquid cooling tubes. The nylon tricot is cut into a long underwear-like shape to form the innermost layer. Additionally, spandex fibers, dacron, and neoprene and other synthetic fibers form additional layers to assist in maintaining pressurization and temperature control. Several pieces make up the spacesuit. These include the hard upper torso, arm, helmet, EVA, and lower torso assembly. The hard upper torso covers the astronaut's chest. The arm assembly covers the arms and connects to the gloves. The helmet and extravehicular visor assembly are designed to protect the astronaut's head while still allowing the astronaut to see as much as possible. The lower torso assembly covers the astronaut's legs and feet. The flexible parts of the suit are made from several layers of material. The layers perform different functions that range from keeping oxygen within the spacesuit to, of course, protecting from space dust impacts. Underneath the spacesuit, astronauts wear a liquid cooling and ventilation garment. Tubes are woven into this tight-fitting piece of clothing that covers the entire body except for the head, hands and feet. Water flows through these tubes to keep the astronaut cool during the spacewalk. On the back of the spacesuit is a backpack called the Primary Life Support Subsystem. This backpack contains the oxygen that astronauts breathe during a spacewalk. It also removes carbon dioxide that astronauts exhale. The backpack also provides electricity for the suit. A fan moves the oxygen through the spacesuit and life support systems, and a water tank holds the cooling water that flows through the liquid cooling and ventilation garment. Also attached to the back of the spacesuit is a device called the Simplified Aid for Extravehicular Activity Rescue or SAFER. SAFER has several small thruster jets. If an astronaut becomes separated from the space station, he or she could use the SAFER to fly back. The spacesuit also contains water to drink during spacewalks. But the first spacesuits were not even close to this level of sophistication. NASA's first spacesuits were developed for the Mercury program. Mercury was the first time NASA astronauts flew into space. These simple suits were based on pressure suits worn by US Navy pilots. Astronauts did not go on spacewalks then. The Mercury suits were worn only inside the spacecraft. It was during the Gemini program that NASA's first spacewalks took place. The suits used for Gemini were more advanced than the Mercury suits, but the Gemini suits were simpler than today's spacesuits. But these suits did not contain their own life support. Instead, they connected to life support systems on the Gemini spacecraft with a cord called the umbilical, like a child in the womb of its mother. The Apollo suits were the first to have boots made to walk on a rocky surface since this was the first mission to the moon. The Apollo suits also contained a life support system similar to the portable life support subsystem on the current suit. 
having a life support system and a spacesuit allowed the astronauts to explore away from the lunar lander. But the technology used for spacesuits had already been tried in other areas of navigation. In spite of this, there was no guarantee that all the uncertainties of space travel had been accounted for. Spacesuits, as we currently define them, have technically been in use since the 1930s when human beings first ventured into high altitudes. Those suits built on the technology developed for deep sea diving, which was the closest analog available. The American space efforts started with the Mercury program, where humans were sent into orbit and never left their ships. The needs for that suit were simple and straightforward protect the astronauts just enough while the craft themselves did most of the hard work in keeping the humans inside them safe. It wasn't until the Gemini program, where astronauts were subjected to the hard vacuum of space, that wider considerations for safety were needed. After Gemini came Apollo, with astronauts subjected to the harshest conditions yet as they improved the spacesuit technology. Today, NASA astronauts wear other suits, in addition to the extravehicular mobility unit or the EMU. The advanced crew escape suit is the orange suit that astronauts wear during launch and landing of the space shuttle. If they wear this during spacewalks, they will freeze to death. Sometimes NASA astronauts will wear the Russian Orland spacesuit. This suit is the Russian version of the EMU and is used for spacewalks. Another Russian suit is the Sokol. Like the advanced crew escape suit, the Sokol is designed only to be used inside a spacecraft. The stages of American space exploration create a handy two-tiered approach to the most common types of spacesuits, from which the suits worn safely inside vessels to suits made for spacewalks on the exterior of a vessel, the IVA and EMA or EVA. The EMA protects the astronaut outside of the spaceship, while the IVA or intravehicular spacesuit is meant to be used inside the vessel. This is worn by astronauts aboard the current SpaceX passengers. The extravehicular spacesuit used by NASA is made up of 16 layers of industrially sewn material. These layers serve a variety of purposes, ranging from retaining oxygen within the spacesuit to shielding against space dust. The cooling garment, which is closest to the astronaut's skin, is the first three layers. The bladder layer sits on top of the garment, which is filled with gas to maintain normal body pressure and hold in oxygen for breathing. The bladder layer is held in place by the next layer, which keeps it in the proper shape around the astronaut's body. The following several layers are insulation and operate as a thermos to assist keep the suit's temperature stable. The white outer layer, which is made of a fabric that combines three types of material, reflects heat from the sun. So how much does it cost to make one of these? NASA places the figures within the ballpark of $500 million. That's according to a new audit of the space agency's 14-year quest to design and build a new generation of spacesuits. Without major changes to the program, it will take at least four more years to produce obstructing NASA's plans to return to the moon by 2024. Just a few years ago, there might have been no way to push that timeline forward. But thanks to the growth of the thriving US commercial space industry, NASA now has options beyond the traditional contractors who have long helped it build the space hardware in-house. Now that America's entrepreneurs like Elon Musk are invested in space research, NASA will have to be more innovative with their spacesuit designs so that they can come up with competitive prices or they lose their best hands to the booming private space industry. In no time, we would have another moon trip back on track. The idea is that competitive entrepreneurs seeking profit as well as glory will innovate and reduce costs. Here's an instance. Building SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket cost as little as 10% of what NASA likely would have spent using a traditional contracting approach. Such savings have opened up a lot of new opportunities in space, and in no time, we'll colonize distant planets and expand our reach throughout the galaxy. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing content. So, see you guys in the next one. Until then, bye.